and gentlemen, you're welcome to your new edition of your program, Africultures. We are going to walk around Africa. We are going to discover Africa. And we are going to sell you a positive Africa today. And exceptionally, we are going to get into a particular place in Africa where you might never have been or in your mind, when they talk about it, you feel that it's very far away or it's a history, it's a story which is recounted to you. Now, today, we are traveling straight into Namibia and we are going to discover the authors, we are going to discover the gallery, we are going to discover the movie industry there, how it's going. It's all Namibia today and we hope that you are going to be with us. You have the contact so you can write to us, ask the questions because we all have to get to Namibia and discover the beauty of Namibia. I'm not going to do it alone. No, I have somebody with me. It is Mr. Hafeni. He's in Cameroon, yes. He has come to discover Africa, the little Africa in miniature that they talk about all the time. But it's an occasion we couldn't miss to talk about that particular country, discover the beauty of Namibia. Mr. Hafeni, welcome. Thank you very much for the opportunity to um, be at Africultures, and uh, yes. I'm honored to be here. So tell us, how did you get yourself into Cameroon? How did it happen? Uh, it's always been my dream to discover the rest of my Africa. Mm -hmm. And uh, having worked uh, as an overland tour guide in 14 countries in Africa, southern and eastern Africa, mm -hmm. um, the fact that I've never been to central or western Africa, uh, it's always been something that has been part of my mission. And, and we're uh, talking about the lions, indomitable lions of Cameroon. Indomitable lions. <laughs> I come from the land of the brave. Uh, a majority of my country growing up will be inspired by the indomitable lions and uh, to be actually in the land itself of the indomitable lions okay you have done some few days here uh, so tell us how um, do you how uh, did the temperature look like oh yeah obviously arriving up in doala um, did you feel any rough tension or something like that <laughs> i was waiting for looking for the lions uh, <laughs> matter of fact uh, obviously uh, it's a beautiful part of the continent and uh, one need to experience it uh, the hospitality uh, coming here uh, was very breathtaking. Obviously, you have a humid uh, temperature mm -hmm. compared to uh, Namibia, yeah, the, yeah. which is a very desert country, very uh -huh. dry. Yeah. Um, but uh, at the same time, uh, has got its own uh, contrast, beauty, and scenery, uh, and cultures, and. Uh, Can we know the neighbors of Namibia? Um, uh, yeah, I come from number. Uh, firstly, uh, uh, before I, I'm uh, Heinrich Hafeni. I'm uh, from Namibia. I'm an entrepreneur uh, and uh, CEO of Hafeni Tourism Namibia, an organization that fully focuses on local tourism, uh, taking tourists in the local communities and experience for them to experience real Namibia. Okay. Uh, apart from that, I'm a young African leader. Uh, Mandela Washington Fellow and um, um, Karen Montana, new leader of tomorrow, Africa South to South Cooperation. Um, my country, Namibia, obviously, between our beautiful countries, uh, Cameroon, I've uh, realized that you've uh, seen in the history that you were a former German colony yes. once. Uh, Namibia was also a former German colony. Yeah. And um, um, we Obviously, uh, our country during our liberation, we had Namibians who were sent here to come study uh, in Cameroon and yeah. Boer. Yeah. And um, there is already that, um, you know, uh, Cameroon is already known in my country. Okay. Um, uh, about my country, is a contrast uh, desert, in arid desert country. Um, mm -hmm. It was uh, a former colony of Germany. Yes. And so uh, your neighbors, how can you talk your neighbors? When we think of Namibia, who is at the west, who is at the south, or something like oh, that? Oh, we are neighboring Angola in the north, um, South Africa in the south, uh, Botswana, Zambia, Zimbabwe, um, and those are our neighboring countries. Okay, he said that Namibia was desertic. I will not like you to think that is. Uh, very ugly yeah. desert though it's a it's beautiful, beautiful desert. desertic area yeah. we'll have the images with you all through this program you'll discover and know more but i would like to ask you do namibians read no namibians read uh we have um, the young generation of uh, you know like you know i i've seen a lot of young uh, stars are taking up uh writing and reading um it's becoming a, a something of uh, a culture well we were impressed by something we discovered a writer in namibia and she was really interesting. Mm -hmm. And that's the one we are proposing to our viewers today mm -hmm. to watch out. It's the author for this edition, We Are in Namibia. The youth these days 
don't have a cultural identity, not most of them have a cultural identity. My name is Kuvichita Movirongo and I'm 14 years old. I won the Young Namibian Writing Competition in the senior category. Hidden in the northern part of Namibia lies the Omusati region, a region like no other. I just thought that I was writing, it's my first time writing, I might come third or second, but I ended up coming first, so I felt so proud. I, I, I just started dancing out of the blue and they were laughing at me because I didn't know how to dance. I felt so happy. After I won the competition, the prize was my book being published. A young Kualuti girl named Nangi lives in Sandi, a beautiful place in the Omusati region. When I was writing the book, at first it was kind of difficult, but then throughout the book I learned some new things and I got people to participate with me, then the words came to me naturally. When she was just a little girl, her father offered her as a tribute to the Ovaherero people in order to unite the two kingdoms and develop an undefeatable empire. The book is about a young girl named Nangi, a young Okwaluti girl that lives in a royal palace homestead. The one thing that was holding them back was Nangi's young age. So her father declared that as soon as she turned 16, they would hold a traditional passing of age ceremony that would determine her womanhood. The Thenic traditional custom is known as an Olufuko ritual to the Ovambo people. The Olufuko ceremony is um, something, it's a very controversial topic. Um, not a lot of people um, liked the idea at that time. So I wanted to take up the responsibility and show them what Olufuko really meant. Olufuko is an ancestral heritage in which we manifest our beings. It builds young girls into the women that they're yet to become. It um, celebrates or it portrays womanhood in a very unique manner. Sure, it has good and bad practices, but why totally eradicate the entire culture? Why not separate the bad from the good? She says Olufuko defines, restores and explains away all the colonial irregularities that African people witnessed under the period of absolute oppression by white colonists. Without Olufuko, we wouldn't know what the um, people, um, what the white people did to us in colonialism those years. Olufuko reunites us with our culture from colonialism as these practices were and still are being undermined by white people and the generations of black people born after colonialism. I want my book to reach um, young um, children these days. I want them to be culturally diverse and I want them to understand their culture and to practice their culture and to basically just see their culture from a different angle. I want to be a doctor. Being an author isn't that different from being a doctor because um, both occupations have one similar goal and that's to help those in need. A doctor does so physically whilst an author does so emotionally. Culture is made up of the social behavior and norms found in human societies. Their good practices and their bad practices. You must remove the bad practices and keep the good practices. It was so beautiful to see such a young baby telling us that she's already ready to write books and inspire the others. I think it was really important for us to get to that youngster to present the writing and the reading ambitions in Namibia. So yeah. tell us, how does it go there? You talked to me about a writer, particular writer at the beginning, and it was mm. your first president. Yes. What was the book about? You never know. The, the book about, um, you know, where we come from as a country to get the independence that we have. Mm -hmm. This uh, man, uh, who was a former president, was uh, for 30 years in exile fighting for, to liberate on behalf of his country. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, upon retirement, he wrote a, let a book Mm -hmm. to narrate the story mm -hmm. of what the struggle was about, which I think is an important, um, sure. that, you know, to be, we need to be able to understand where we come from, yeah. to be able to appreciate where we are going. So you understand that writing for the Namibians is also like making history. Yeah. Everybody has a story that he's trying to recount, and that's very important. And that's why we have your program, Africultures. Mm. You can get to us following our number, telling us, what you think of Namibia, or if you have questions for Mr. Afeni, know that we are there to give you answers. We're going to proceed right now and get into the gallery. It's a particular place. 
I would like you to discover it. It's true, it's Namibia, but we had our way of watching Namib Namibia. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's get to the gallery for this edition. that if you had to look at the drawings on stones you have to go to Egypt but I was surprised when going through Namibia to discover that there were such artifacts discovery and history in Namibia how mm. does it come up yeah um, our history Namibia and possibly the old southern Africa mm -hmm. the original inhabitants of southern Africa are the Sun or the Khoisan people mm -hmm. also referred to as the Bushmen okay the Bushmen resided in that area and they were the original inhabitants. Mm -hmm. Bantu migrants arrived more than 2,000 years ago, okay. obviously threatened their way of life and their existence okay. as the mm -hmm. Bantus were more dominant and they took all the land that were take, he, held by the uh, Khoisan people. Okay. Meaning that what you see, the paintings that you see there, those are paintings, they, they were nomadic people, gathers and hunters. Mm -hmm. They will hunt wild animals, and wherever they hunt the wild animals is where they will be making their shelter and their home. Okay. So when you look at the paintings that you are seeing there on the rock paintings, mm -hmm. those are rock paintings that are obviously you see there's a zebra mm -hmm. uh, on the or a, or a, a lion with a hunter. Or in the hunter. So meaning that here at that specific area in the Namib desert, there used to be elephants and those wild animals. So these paintings are almost more than 2,000 years ago, old, mm -hmm. and they are on rocks. 2,000 years ago that yeah. we have such yeah, paintings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they are being preserved. And they are still being, pre today they are being preserved by, uh, you know, as part of our heritage preservation of where we come from. Okay. And to be able to, you know, the future generation to understand that. So it means that if you get to Namibia to visit such a yes. place, you can have somebody who will take you around. Yes, and their heritage and their preserve as part of the uh, Namibia Heritage Council and the Museum Association of Namibia. They and then they are in local communities, okay. and these local communities are actually, you know, benefiting from this ancient art and artifact mm -hmm. as a way to bring more tourists and to attract. Obviously, it's a big attraction for tourism to hear the story 
of how those uh, nomads and uh, Kwesan uh, uh, people live, live there. And uh, obviously the story is that they never stay at the same place. Mm -hmm. They will, they are gathers and hunters. Where they hunt the wild animal is where they will put up their shelter. And obviously then they will move and they will move. So these paintings are all around the mountainous area around Namibian locations. Okay, so it means that the government is making sure that yeah. it's preserved. It's preserved. And unfortunately, you are not allowed to take a picture with a flash because if you do the flash, it will, it, it has a, 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 it a, a it yeah, it reflect, uh, reflect the and, and then cause it to, yeah. The crashing. Yeah, because they, the, the they use local, um, uh, you know, I mean, uh, uh, stones sand, and yes. sand and uh, to draw. And this is their way of life. Most of it, when you look at these art paintings, it tells a story okay. of how they will make a bushfire and they will be, you know, how they will live. Actually, it's yeah, not just about the story. animals, it's about the story, how they used to live there. They're actually narrating. Mm -hmm. You know, there were no cameras, there were no Nothing. photos. And, and there were no writing. Uh, no writing, so they will, like, tell. That was the part of their narrating their story back then. And today, more than 2,000 years uh, later, uh -huh. we, the new generation of the continent, get to experience what it was. It's very important because they usually yeah. say that Africa does not have a written history. But we understand that our ancestors felt the need to be putting our history somewhere. Yeah. And if it's true, that method that we can recount, tell our story, I think is the best we yeah. can have. Yeah, yeah. But right now, after discovering that beautiful place, I like to still get into history to get into the fashion design. Mm. I discovered that um, there was a particular way of getting dressed at the time when we were having the, the, the Germans mm -hmm. around. They were asking from the black slaves to be wearing the outfits of the of the German yeah. Uh, yeah. missionary. Yes, yeah. like the colonial master. The difference was on the head. There was they were called the to head. wear that particular yeah. outfit on the head yeah. to show that they were cows. Yeah. And what is magical about that is that they took it not like a shame, not like an insult. It became fashion mm -hmm. in Namibia. I'll call on you, ladies and gentlemen, to stay with us and let's get into the history of fashion, something that in Africa we hardly have an answer. So, ladies and gentlemen, watch it. It's the first part of our podium for this edition. <laughs> Skirts, bright colors, and the iconic three-point hat. These are the trademarks of Mark Bright Kavari's work. In a world of fashion where African patterns are becoming increasingly popular, the 25-year-old Namibian embraces the Victorian heritage that once came from Europe to Namibia. It tells us who we are. It tells us more about where we came from, who, who we represent. It makes us be who, who we are individually, yes. Kavari's fashion is in trend. His modern Herero dresses have traveled to catwalks across the continent and Europe. For Kavari, this dress is, however, much more than just a fashion statement. Originally, German missionaries ordered Hereros to wear Victorian dresses. The animal herding people appropriated this dress code in their own way and added special features such as colorfully printed fabrics and the headgear resembling the horns of a cattle. This way, the Herero turned the humiliation into a triumph. Kavari continues this tradition with a modern twist. I always say, especially when I get criticism uh, regarding my designs, I would say what makes a Herero dress be a Herero dress is basically the headgear, that is the cow horns. Otherwise, one can play around with it, have it short, have it sleeveless, have it either way you want to. Yeah. His fashion shows regularly spark heated debates on whether his gowns are too revealing and therefore an insult to the sensitive history of the Herero. Many young people, like these models, however, enjoy Kavari's take on the dress. They're beautiful, like wherever you go, everybody will just be like, oh, that, that you look beautiful on it. You know, I love fashion, so <laughs> you go to a wedding, you would want to wear the latest and all that. Yeah, it's very beautiful. That's why I love it. For the Hereros, the historical attire is an important element of their commemorative culture. Every year in the town of Okahanja, the Herero pay tribute to their ancestors. 
Tens of thousands were massacred by German colonial troops in what came to be known as the first genocide of the 20th century. As a sign of bravery, Herero warriors defending their people took over the uniforms of the killed Germans. Today, these former German robes help young Herero to relate the history of their people and honor their ancestors. I feel at peace when I'm in this and uh, it, we, we feel proud about ourselves. It shows that you are a hero, like apart from everybody, you just, you know, put yourself out there. I like showing respect to my ancestors and I feel like I was, I was there once fighting with them to get freedom. Kavari grew up in Windhoek. From a young age, he was fascinated with the traditional attire. Kavari made his first designs at the age of 13 when his mother brought him a sewing machine. At 16, he had his first major fashion show in Berlin featuring the Herero dress. Being a man, however, is sometimes difficult. Especially at the beginning of his career, some family members and friends mocked him for doing what they perceived as women's work. It's not easy, you get criticism, you get people talking to tell, oh, no, then you're not, you know, you're somewhere, not the guy, you, you. But then now that I came to realize in my people, the culture, the, 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 the heroes, they somehow appreciate what I do. One of his uncles refused to talk to Kavari for years. But with success, there was acceptance, and today he is seen as a role model for many. As a designer, Kavari wants to reach above all the young generation. He hopes that these designs can help young Hereros to be proud of who they are and where they come from. I know it's so difficult to accept the change. Um, after every fashion show, you'll get comment, people criticizing and trying to, you know, punch you for what you have done on the dress but after all it's a uh, it's 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 I know the change is not easy but after all the the change also makes the young people get to fall in love with the dress and just carry wearing and loving our traditional attire while the Herero dress stands for tradition and identity it also shows that Africanizing fashion is not reserved for Western designers who are increasingly making use of ethnic African patterns the ensemble of traditional European and African elements in Kavari's work is proudly turning the tables. And that was uh, Namibia, still Namibia for the podium, for this first part of the podium. So how do you feel it? Is it the, he the history, has it been well recounted? Or there's something you, wa you would like to add about it? Uh, you know, um, you know, yeah, that's hero. I mean, you, I mean, when you think about Namibia, I think hero um, people and the hero dress comes up as one of those um, attractive, um, you know, um, traditions that uh, people um, in connect Namibia. Mm -hmm. um, prior to uh, the dress, I mean, um, the before the Germans um, in the early 1900s, mm -hmm. the over Hereros were referred to as the Ovahimba people, okay. who reside in the northern part of Namibia, a mountainous area bordering Angola, Kaokoland. Okay. Due to severe drought and not having enough, you know, and because they are cattle headers, okay. Himba and Herero are the same people, we and the same. Himba are the same in a, the same, uh, you know, like um, obviously wear only animal skin dress, okay. and obviously um, you know don't cover themselves up, yeah. and um, they break away and they move to the eastern part of Namibia. This other Himba. Uh, who later will call themselves Herero, meaning okay. that we have drifted or we have moved, okay. and uh, they are the same tribe. Okay. Uh, going forward, obviously, the eastern part of Namibia was controlled. It was a stronghold of the Germans. Obviously, the Germans arrived in Namibia in 1892, okay. and they control uh, eastern, southern, central, and uh, uh, eastern part of Namibia meaning that when those of Ahimba people migrated to the eastern part, they okay. found already the Germans or co existing with the natives there. Okay. And one thing led to another. The Ovahimba Herero people started now becoming helpers okay. to the or German uh, colonial um, settlers. Okay. 
So we discovered that we have a particular way of dressing yeah. in Namibia, but it doesn't mean that in Namibia there is no fashion. The world of fashion in Namibia is so great. I will call on you to watch this second part of our podium. We are going to get into Windock. And Windhoek, are we know well, the, the Windhoek, the capital city, yeah. Yeah, and, and we have the Windhoek fashion. And I, and I think one thing that I f uh, prior to that, what I forget to mention is that the the Victorian dress that I mean it's uh, come from the German people, mm -hmm. the Vict uh, missionary women who used to wear that, uh -huh. and many. Obviously, when you did not only wear any more skin, so they will give so over, <laughs> say, can you cover up now? Uh -huh. And that became now today an embodiment and part of the culture of the Ovairero people. That's it, to show and that they you left from the bush yeah. areas yeah. and accepted that you were somehow a In a general, man. The, it was just the Victorian dress, uh -huh. but the Herero people turned it into their own oh. way. And then the headscarf the cow, that represent the horn of the cow yeah. came later, and I said, we are cattle headers. Let us be able to create this turn this dress into who we are who we identity. identity hence okay. now you can see there so we are going to show to the people out there that namibia has her own designs her history in fashion but also has a fashion week with all the designers who are coming from mm. all over africa yeah it is the window fashion week fashion that we week. propose that you watch and follow us just after that i see
when you see such, I think you can't tell yourself that Africa is a poor country, a poor continent. You can't say that uh, in Africa you can't find your way. If you're a young person and that may be in Cameroon, you're feeling that you're not happy with what you're going through, you can get to another part of Africa. Is the answer we are trying to give to you today because it's very important. You cannot go and die at sea because you believe that the best is there. No. You already have the opportunity today to talk of Namibia, to discover Namibia, and we have a chance to have a representative of the Namibian con uh, country. So don't hesitate. Get to our contacts and write to us if you're interested. And if you want to know more about Namibia, don't hesitate. Mm. Or any other African country because Africulture is your program. And you should remind, we should remind you that uh, it's every Tuesday as from 6.30 p.m. And we broadcast on Sunday at 1.30 p.m. You have been asking the questions because you are coming up and discovering the program suddenly on Canal 2 International, uh, Canal 2 English. But I'll just call on you to stay tuned because we are going to talk of Africa. We are going to break Africa like that for you to understand that you can make your life in this continent. We are not going to hesitate again. We are going to get straight back into Namibia. And uh, the images which are coming up is something that really marked our team because it showed that in Namibia, the movie industry and all the like is growing very fast. But we are going to get to music. Music, first of all. And I'll ask you again this trickish question. Can you give out three names when they talk about music <laughs> in the Namibian uh, showbiz industry? Oh, yes. I mean, music yeah. in, um, is the heartbeat of our nations and uh, the continent. And um, in Namibia, uh, we have uh, celebrated artists um, by the name of uh, King T.D., uh -huh. um, who has uh, collaborated, among others, with Davido, um, uh, Diamond Platinum, uh -huh. and won numerous awards in the continent, uh, including uh, uh, Cora, All Africa uh, um, Music, I think. Uh, and then we also have uh, Gaza, uh -huh. um, who is also one of the top artists in Namibia. Uh -huh. And um, Gaza has also collaborated with a uh, Nigerian uh, artist, uh, many of them, and I think it's even with Davido, yeah. and, um, and um, uh, he's very successful and an award-winning artist. I was impressed uh, because when you talk of Namibia, you see the dancing, <laughs> the girls half naked, you have the impression that it's only that in Namibia. Yeah. No, Namibia today, even with the, 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 the sports, even mm. the musical mm. stands, when you see the quality of the productions, it's really great. Mm. So we can say that today Namibia stands like a future mm. for Africa. And we also have the female uh, artist, uh, you know, <laughs> not forgetting yeah. uh, one of the famous uh, uh, lady uh, duo, uh, Gail Level. Um, they've, uh, you know, you, you probably the destiny's child of our Africa. Yeah. Um, and uh, Stella, who, who's a, a solo artist, uh, who continue to sing, you know, she herero, uh, the herero uh, local uh, music. Yeah. And I think when you go to a country, you want to, and most of these artists sing in the local dialect. Yes. And that's how you connect to that country. And I, even when I came to Cameroon, I, I was listening to Cameroonian <laughs> music. And unfortunately, I, will, um, I but I was just dancing to it. I love it. It's the rhythm. I, I feel the Africa rhythm. Africa and rhythm. Yes, the rhythm, yes. So the musical part for this program today, we had to look at what you said. We have to have uh, the woman. Yes. It's important. Yeah, very important. Yeah. We have to look at somebody who sings with the dialect. Yes, yes. For us to feel that it's Africa. Mm. But we did not want to stay backwards. We wanted to show the modern side of it. Mm. And so if we can have an artist who is modern, who sings in dialect, and who, glorifi who glorifies the African woman, I think we have Gaza. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so and right I, now. And I think we've done that with Diamond Platinum and King Tidi. They uh, played a song in Swahili and in Oshiwambo, which is a and collaboration. And you tell us in which uh, language you sing it, Osh because Osh I just Osh like the sound, and the girl was beautiful, the and the images was yeah. wow. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, is the artist for this edition, <laughs> it is Gaza. He comes from Namibia. There were many. We had to make a choice, <laughs> yeah. but you'll see why we chose him for this edition. Watch it out. Put your number on my 
That's it. We had Gaza for the artists for this edition, and we are still going to stay in Namibia. We are going to have some images right now, and they were really impressive because it's somebody who went to Namibia, shot a documentary, and came back with this hidden image from the backstage. So watch it out, and we'll have more about it later on.
saw mm. these images, I had just one question, Mr. Afeni. What is that clay about? You told me something about it, the clay that they put all over the body. Yeah, so uh, the, those are the Ovahimba people of Namibia. Uh -huh. yeah, I've mentioned before the Herero are the same the same they are the same people it's just okay. they break so away clay so the clay that I you saw the red is a stone called the red ochre okay. it's a, a red a stone that is red that is that is that they have they to crush it. Uh -huh. and it produces a, a reddish powder why do they put it on your body and um, this reddish powder uh, before the body they uh, have to mix it together with animal fat from the because they are cattle headers they have to milk the women have to go at sunrise to milk uh, the cow yeah. and then they will take a calabash and then they will produce sour milk for eating and then the extract of fat they use it for cooking and then the other one they use that butter that fat together with that yellow right. red powder uh -huh. and then they will uh, put it put up on, on the their body. on their body it's part of their daily lifestyle and this is a uh, part of their identity Okay. They are known as the red people, but uh, also at the same time, this um, uh, red ochre prevents themselves also from the sun. The sun. And not yeah. just the Imba people, they use it. They, it's also used by other tribes, but they don't use it the full body. But this tradition uses the whole body. Okay. And uh, women, they don't shower. They mm -hmm. just use a, a small little fire in their small... Uh, their houses is made from cow dung. Okay. So they use the cow dung, it's like the little rondeville. And then they will have to, women are responsible for making sure that the cow dung from the kraal is the, and then they make a small little fire and they cover themselves uh -huh. and they put, and then they, they will, they obviously they they're in terms of uh, getting, you know, they're fresh. Okay. So, so we got the info we needed. Now we are getting into the world of movies. And I would like to show this, uh, showcase this trailer for people to understand that today in Namibia, it is not just that style of movie, documentary. It's also action, so watch it as a trailer for this edition. It's Esme. Foybe. Your son. And everybody knows you're a convict. Am I missing something here? Yes. Your brother was a decent boy. I'd rather you died. Where are the diamonds? What diamonds? Chicago is on top now. He's controlling the gangs, the drugs. And if there's anybody that knows what happened to your brother, it's him. Big money? I can help you out, my brother. If you take my job off, I'll leave your little girlfriend alone. You will tell no one about our arrangement. If you do, they will take care of your girl. Kanja, why are you ignoring me? I don't know what to do. Please help me. We'll find him. The boy belongs to me now. Live like this for the rest of your life, smelling like chip vinegar and chips. Shh. I enjoyed the name, and that was a big blockbuster in uh, mm -hmm. Namibia yeah. some time ago. Yeah. And we really encourage the industry because it's going very fast. But there's a big secret that has been hidden from us in Africa it is that Namibia is the land which has been used for very, very big movies around the world. We have Angelina Jolie, Tom Cruise, and all the like. Mm -hmm. You don't believe me? Watch this.
the locations really did become a major part of how you determine what the sequence would be. We were never restricted. In Namibia, we had nothing but open spaces. So there was never a thought of trying to frame something out so you could actually include the frame totally. So it was just a unique landscape. Go cameras, please. The long chase and race that is the, the backbone of the film requires not just a desert, because uh, visually it gets a bit tedious after a while, but uh, needs four or five different flavours of nothing, and I hope that's what we've uh, found here in beautiful Namibia. We're off to Namibia to shoot all of our ancient Egypt and modern-day Iraq stuff. Whatever's in there has been safely hidden for 2,000 years. Rolling! I love being in Namibia. I've always wanted to come to Namibia. They scoured the world for these dunes. My chosen. We built a whole town in Namibia and then blew the whole town up. Oh, no, we're gonna die! Get ready for a big old ride. It's gonna be a huge ride. Let Yeah. So, we are watching it and discovering that Namibia might not be the Nollywood, the Bollywood, but it has the area for the biggest productions. And you're telling us that you were a chance to work with Tom Cruise on one of the locations he was around? Yeah, and I think, uh, you know, Namibia is such a small, beautiful country, and I come from a town called Swakopmund, which is a tourism the capital of Namibia, uh, if I might say, uh, as it's surrounded by this oldest desert in the world and the highest sand dunes in the world. and and it's a destination for uh, major international movies okay. and uh, the likes of Tom Cruise and um, Angelina. Angelina Jolie, uh, Dennis Quaid, uh, Tyrese Gibson um, and many others. And you told me that because you were so open to them, that's why Angelina Jolie came and took her I first child yeah. from Namibia. Yeah, and she decided to give birth and she brought Brad Pitt and spent <laughs> time until they gave birth uh, uh, in Swakopmund. So what yeah. can we say then, say that Namibia is a place to be? Yeah. We are going to continue right now with the discovery for this edition. It is Windhoek. Windhoek. Presented to us. The, the, huh? the capital city. That's the yeah, capital uh, city. We are going to discover Windhoek because we have this part of our program, yeah. which is called Discovery. And it's a young, beautiful lady on B BBC that we took over to give us what we need to know about Namibia. <laughs> Windhoek was built on a permanent hot spring and is in the central of Namibia. The name Windhoek is believed to come from the Afrikaans word Windhoek, which means wind corner. Hi there, I'm Azaria, I'm 13, and this is my Windhoek. Windhoek is home to many cultural groups. Some of those are Oshierero, Nama, Oshivambo, and Caprivi. The Nama and the Oshierero first settled here and they were the first one to go against the Germans that colonized the country. This is Zoo Park and it is my favorite picnic spot. I come here with my friends and family to eat lunch and just enjoy myself. It was a public zoo until 1962 when it shut down and is now only functioning as a shady retreat and a picnic spot for lunching workers and everyone else that likes coming here. There are traditional stalls here where you can find the food of the bamboo and also another group called the Caprivi. There you can eat their seeds, the mopani worms, the mahangu and the kapana. I am a Nama and I really love my culture. Okay, so now it's lunch time and I will show you the Nama traditional cuisine. Come with me. What is that? Why you eat Mama. In my culture, my elders, they still wear the Nama attire every day. This is what we Namas eat. This is called Klegi and Kultani. It is dumplings and goat meat. This is Uguti Toms. It is the, the stomach and the legs of the sheep. But did you prepare my favorite for me? Oh, banana stamina. <laughs> 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 
Yay, my favorite food is coming and I'm so excited to eat it. This is what we call the piritanas. So others call it the smiley. We call it smiley because of the teeth. You can see its teeth all over. My favorite of this is the tongue and the brain. It is really delicious meat. So tasty. A tongue chewing a tongue. You will find many different sites in Finduk that many of us really love to visit. I like to come to the Independence Memorial Museum because it has golden elevators and I can see the view of the city from the elevator. I like history and I like seeing the past and all of that. The Independence Museum was opened in 2014 and is dedicated to the anti-colonial and independent struggle of the country. At Christ Church, many people love to have their weddings there because of the architecture and because of the beautiful design. And Christ Church is an unofficial landmark of the city. This is the Heroes Acre. It is where all our heroes and heroines are laid to rest. This place becomes so packed during state memorials that there's not even place to move. You will find the graves of many heroes of Namibia that fought for our independence. Famous people like Andima Tueva Yatueva Aparitia. He was in the same prison on Robben Island as Nelson Mandela. I like Vinduk because it is where all the buzz is and it is where everyone likes to be. I like it because here there is more opportunity for everyone. I'll just say that that's Smiley. Here in Cameroon or Nigeria, it is called Ishew. So we enjoy it also. And you see that we are having the same thing all over Africa. We are from one, one mom, and that's Africa. I would like to ask you today, Mr. Hafeni, you have been with us today. What is the word you can send out to the others who are watching our program today? Um, uh, thank you. You know, Africa, you know, we are one. Uh, we should hold hands, uh, especially as young Africans to be able to share ideals and, you know, visit one another, um, find, you know, collaborate with one another, uh, find strong, uh, inst or create strong institutions. Okay, so today if Cameroonians would like to get to Namibia, they can get to you. Yeah, you can, oh, definitely. That's why I'm here. I'm a very passionate about Africa. And, and as I said, I'm, I'm happy to be a Namibian, but I'm more even happier to be an African. And Africulture is going to be in Namibia. You said it. And, then, and, that's an, and I think that's a platform. Very soon, we're going to bring to you the uh, images and talk, uh, to uh, you, uh, to talk to you about everything. And if you're in Cameroon, you can get to the Limbe City Council, where you get to the tourism offices. There you have all the information you need to get to Namibia. It was a great time you had together. Mm -hmm. I'd like you to give a word, just looking at your camera, to all the Africans there in Namibia who are following you from Cameroon today. Ndapandula, eshi mud ma pandula, ndapandula, eshi ndia. Um, I think you know. I get. I you know. You cut me off. So I know that video <laughs> can always edit. But I, I will. <laughs> you know. I get a bit of cut off card. I say um, Cameroon, Africa, Namibia. Atushe vamo aveke. Natu kaleni pamwe. Natu longele ni pamwe. Atushe ni vamo aveke. Ndapandula. Okay. So you have the number to get to us if you would like to know more about Namibia yeah. or get into contact with, uh, with Mr. Afeni. Or you have to get to Limbe Street to go for the tourism offices in the city council. And know that more is still to come. It is your program. It's Africultures. And we told you it's every Tuesday as from 6.30 p.m. And mm. Sundays, 1.30 p.m. So ladies and gentlemen, you want to talk about Africa. You want to know a positive Africa. Stay tuned. I'm Tessa Bags. I'm waiting for you for the next edition. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank you.